Hi, everyone. This is RJ. Um, I just wanted to talk for just a second before you watch the video um, of Food Racks today. Um, I'm recording this the morning after a horrific attack uh, in Georgia to eight people, uh, six of whom were from Asian descent, mostly due in part of the racism that's kind of been brought up because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And I just want to say that being Asian and Asian American is a big part of my identity. It is something that I have conflicted feelings about because it was not easy coming to America. I, I experienced it and seeing my parents experience it, it was really hard and I still carry a lot of that baggage and trauma today, but I am doing my best to try to still be a good citizen of the, the world um, by trying to be positive, trying to really share positivity and um, just being a good person. And there are a lot of people that have done great things to support anti-Asian violence. So I'm going to share all of those links um, with this video. If you feel inclined to educate yourself, to learn about our history, learn about um, different activism that you can be a part of, learn about uh, where you can donate, um, I will be sharing that in this video. I do want to point out the National Asian Pacific American Women's Forum as an organization that you can be a part of. Um, they are trying to build collective power with AAPI women and girls uh, throughout the country, especially in Georgia, to gain full agency over their lives and their family and their communities. And if you feel so inclined, you know, follow them on social media, learn about their work, subscribe to their email, subscribe to their organization, donate, take action, really um, find where in your heart you want to support because I I really hope you enjoyed this video. It's about, the, the timeline is too of this video being about Raya and making shrimp kanji. Like it's just, there's so many feelings right now. So I really hope that you just watch, watch this video, still feel inclined afterwards to be like, this is such a beautiful culture, seeing it from the movie and from, you know, the food that you feel inclined to support and protest or or donate or just any way you can to show that you stand with us it will be very, very appreciated. I'm so grateful for all of you. Thank you so much. Enjoy the show. He loved to entertain and uh, to feed, which, you know, I can relate. <laughs> you guys are going to be so shocked at how crazy easy it is to make rice porridge. I mean, it is so easy to make it. For Kumandra. I'm trying to make it a circle like the dragon gem. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of RJ's Food Rocks. Today is a very special episode because we are renaming the episode RJ's Food Ryoks. <laughs> because today, today we are celebrating the newest Disney movie, Raya and the Last Dragon, by recreating one of the foods that was featured in this movie. And let me tell you, there were a lot to choose from. There were a lot of food to choose from for this movie to recreate, but I decided to choose this one. It is the shrimp kanji from Raya and the Last Dragon. If you wanna know like how I feel about Raya and the Last Dragon, could you try and guess like if I loved it or not? Well, you don't have to guess because you can listen to my Popsicle episode, which is my new podcast where I lap up what's new in pop culture. And happily enough, Raya was the latest in pop culture. So I talked to my good friend Frankie um, over at the Popsicle on the Ampliverse channel. So make sure you watch that. In the movie, there is this little boy named Boone who owns this like, um, like boat. <laughs> That is a restaurant, essentially, and his specialty is shrimp kanji. So I was very excited to make this. I remember seeing it in the movie and was like, that's it, I'm gonna make kanji. Because you guys are gonna be so shocked at how crazy easy it is to make rice porridge. I mean, it is so easy to make it. And I think like, as we make this one, 
you'll kind of see like I think like the consistency that it came out with was a little bit more like homemade rather than like what real kanji is like like what I'm picturing where it is more sticky and mushy really really love the movie I mean I'll, I guess I will just say that really loved Boone I thought Boone was so cute and he was giving me like full I mean I've as you can tell I've been on a big k-pop fantasy and Boone was giving me like full idol like moves he was pop lock and dropping it like he had like his isolations were so sharp and crisp and he loved to entertain and uh to feed which you know I can relate <laughs> which is, I just don't have the dance moves just because I'm, I'm more of a mover than a dancer. But if there's anyone out there who wants to like, give me choreography to do for my other Food Rocks videos, so then I can be more like Boone and entertain while people eat. Uh, let me know. Let's collab. <laughs> Here I am. I'm going to show you how to make shrimp kanji on your own home. Let's go to the kitchen. I mean, truly the main thing that shrimp kanji is, is rice that you let cook for so long that it has changed its like form and shape. A good ratio that I was able to find online is that like basically for seven parts liquid, you need one part rice. So here I have six cups of broth. The last cup I actually use later on um, once the rice is like basically done. I have here like rinsed white rice. This is just rinsed jasmine uh, rice and then I put it in there. That's one cup um, uncooked rice. To this pot, I'm also adding um, ginger. I've peeled and cut up and sliced ginger. And then I've also sliced up some garlic that I'm adding in there. Now, I love a lot of ginger in my soups, so I'm using a lot. But go ahead and use as much as you want or as little as you want. But essentially, that is all the flavoring that you need. You're gonna let this pot boil and once it starts boiling, then you are going to put it in like a medium-ish heat so that there's still like an ongoing rolling boil, like a small rolling boil. Cover it up and you are going to let that cook for an hour. <laughs> and it's going to look weird as you continue to do it. You're going to be like, oh, um, all I'm seeing is rice. It's not really cooking. You have to truly wait until the rice and the starch have fully cooked all the way through and starting to change shape. So it does look like really porridgey consistency. I'm also showing you this really neat trick how I cook shrimp. My mom actually taught me how to do this. So in a smaller pot, you basically dump in your shrimp and whatever you, I put in ginger because I had extra ginger. So I just threw that in there too to help with flavor. But I am using a can of sparkling water. So the sparkling water that I'm using is peach and honey flavored, but my mom actually uses Sprite when she cooks shrimp for me. And you're cooking the shrimp until it's opaque, that it's not translucent anymore, that you can feel it, like the meat is firm, that this is cooked. You don't want to overcook it too much because then the the shell sticks to the, the meat of the body of the shrimp. So a good like test for this is that once you start seeing the water start to boil, um turn it off and then wait a minute because that usually means that the shrimp is ready to be done like you should be able to like touch it and feel it and feel that it's firm it's not squishy and that you can't see through it that it has it's it's opaque it's not translucent anymore that shrimp is ready to be peeled and ready to top your kanji bowls um, but what's important is that you just keep mixing it like this because once it does keep cooking it's gonna stick to the bottom of your pan. Um, so just make sure you check it every couple minutes and, and just stir it. But once you have your hour long kanji, it should look like this. Do you see it now how it's kind of like really broken down and it's sticky? What I'm doing is I'm adding that last cup of chicken broth on here to get that consistency back to a more balanced, um, part liquid, part solid. <laughs> the way it looks here now. Finally, the best part of kanji is you, I mean, I guess besides eating it, is choosing what toppings you wanna do. So I've prepared here that shrimp that we did, I just peeled off the skin. Um, I kept the tail on just for fun because that's how it looked like in the movie, but you can take out the tails too. 
I have sauteed like cut up oyster mushrooms. They're like really fun shaped. And then I've also sauteed the white parts of a green onion. And then I have fried garlic and a sesame oil. So in one version, I'm topping it with just a drizzle of sesame oil, some of that wood, some of the mushrooms and the onions and shrimp, topping it with fried garlic. But that's kind of like my loaded shrimp congee. A more simple version, you can just use the shrimp, the green parts of a green onion, some of that fried garlic bits, and then just some splashes of lime. And that'll be another version. That's kind of closer to what Boone was serving on the movie. But there you go. Shrimp kanji. It really fills you up. So it's a great way to serve dinner on a cold night. Guarantee it. I have made shrimp kanji just like what Boone serves in his boat. Here it is. I am. Um, I'm gonna say this is like a very Americanized easy way to do kanji. I'm sure there's a specific grain of rice that I'm supposed to be making it with, but not today. I used just like regular uh, long grain jasmine rice, but here you go. Mm. 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 The porridge is so good. You can really taste the ginger and the garlic. And it just, uh, just warms you up. Mm. Yum, 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 yum. Feel energized. Feel ready to uh, help Sisu and Raya. Uh, I mean, I'm a really big Sesame fan, so love that sesame burst. And the mushrooms are so good. So easy to make your own kanji. Try it at home. It's a great way to have a nice warm uh, dinner when you just have rice and stock in your house. Thank you guys so much for watching another video of RJ's Food Rocks. You can find me at RJ Food Rocks on all of your social media. And don't forget, you can also find me on The Popsicle, like I've said earlier. It's a new podcast um, where we talk about something new in pop culture every week. You can find it on all of your social media and on the Ampliverse YouTube channel. Last but not least, I have a Patreon. And if you want to support the show and you love the work that I do every week, every Friday, I make sure there's a new video for you. Um, go ahead and um, support me. With $5 a month, you can be um, a Patreon food rocker with these people here, but you also are included in a monthly drawing for a monthly gift. You also get an exclusive video that's just for you every week. So thank you again to all of my food rockers and thank you for watching this video. Let me know what you think about this movie a first of all and also the shrimp kanji if you make it at home for yourself let me know what type of toppings that you want to put on it let me know um how it turned out for you this is such an awesome easy recipe to make that you can make for dinner whenever wherever um with just simple pantry ingredients like rice and broth like super easy so let me know what you think thank you so much for watching this video i'll see you back next week with another one bye for Kumandra.